Hello everybody and welcome back to the Silicon Nubian YouTube channel. In this video we're going to take a look at one of our favorite distributions. What seems to be passing by our desk lately are distributions that are designed to run very well on old hardware, which is something that's close to our hearts. Repurposing all those old PCs out there that people think wouldn't be able to keep up with today's demands, but yes they can. So, we're going to take a look today at Antix Linux version 16.1. Antix is based on Mepis Linux, and the developers of Antix want to give you uh, a very functional, fully functional Linux distribution that can operate very well on lower hardware, or I should say older hardware, with lower hardware requirements. What we have in front of you here is when we boot into the live DVD of Antix 16.1 very nice looking desktop in this video we're going to do two parts we're going to start with the installation to show you how easy it is to install and then we're going to move on to poking the tires of the installed distribution so let's get started right away we have a very nice looking desktop everything that should be present is present kinda of spartan but I like it like that and many people will once again, Antix is designed to run very well on lower spec hardware. And a uh, little spoiler alert, you're going to see that it actually does that very well. So here we have RAM being used, uh, 4 gigs total, 138 megs, but that might change when it's a fully installed system. Right now we have a system running off a live media, live media. So let's continue. And we have this little display. We have the screens, of course. And then we have a uh, removable drive with mount partition was not found. It's a drive mounter, of course, to show the desktop. So we can just click on it, get rid of that, which is in a poor position to begin with. Uh, that can be changed. We see we only have three icons on the desktop files, which is a file manager. Single click, I'm sorry, my bad. And we have help. And it comes with a very uh, decent amount of help, and I'm going to show you some interesting things about that as well. And we have the install. We're not going to go through the menu right now. We're going to do that post-install. So let's get started on the installation and show you how easy this is. Once the install is started, installer will run. You have your terms of use. This is very interesting. At startup, you have a choice during the installation to have your Antix distro, Antix distro installation uh, use three different repositories. Jesse, which is Debian stable, and I failed to point out that Antix is based on Debian. Testing, experts, or SID, unstable. You have that selection or that choice at the beginning. So let's continue. And it asks you which repository would you like. We're going to go for playing it safe, I'm going to stick with Jesse, which is the stable repository. Your Debian and Antix repositories are set to Jesse. The installer will now run. I find that's very interesting. May not be the most intuitive for a newbie, but uh, the explanation is, is fairly straightforward, and I find I, I consider that to be two thumbs up on that. So here we go. We start with the uh, terms of use. What hard disk? If you want to run the partition tool, what we're going to do is the easiest install, which is auto install using the entire disk of this virtual hard disk that we have. OK to format and use the entire disk, dev SDA for Antix Linux. Of course, we're going to say yes. There it's formatting the swap partition and the root partition. And there we are copying the new system. So we're going to let this roll. Uh, we might skip forward a bit in the video, but we're going to let this roll and see how it goes. It's already up to 25% approximately. Here we go. Not very fancy, but fancy doesn't mean that it's better. I actually like how simple it is, and it's going quite, quite fast. Uh, one thing about these Linux distributions that are coming out lately, uh, we did 
uh, a few reviews of lighter weight distributions and I have to tell you that Antix is known to be one of the lightest in terms of the balance between uh, um, easy to run with older hardware versus functionality and uh, as soon as 16.1 came out definitely want to give it a try and see kick the tires as it were and see if it's worthwhile for someone to put on an older system I do have one or two here that I'm thinking of putting Antix on uh, here we have, which is probably under three or four minutes, and we're already close to finishing the copying file uh, portion of the installation. And almost done. A few little more things it has to do, housekeeping and whatnot, and then we should uh, move on to the next stage of the installation. There we go. Install Grub. We'll put it in the MBR. Next. Yes. For those of you who have never installed Linux and may actually happen to see this video, you can see how easy it actually is. Um, it actually is easier in a few other distributions. This one is, I would rank it uh, very high up there on um, ease of installation. Your computer name, we'll leave it at Antics. You can call it what you want for network consideration. Your domain. Keyboard is US, leave that as standard. System clock uses local. Format, that's the format you want it in, whether it's 24 hour time or 12 hour time. I'm gonna use UTC, so if I would click on here, it would use my local time. I'm just gonna leave it as the, where it is. I got my time zone correct. Uh, services setting now we're going to go into this but for a newbie this would be uh, a little bit too much potentially I'm looking at all the services that will start up with your Linux um, distribution and I can see cron which is a scheduler sudo of course we need that smart tools for monitoring smart monitoring tools um, there aren't that much, there isn't really that much that starts up with it, so everything looks like it's good to go. Cups for printing, of course, secure shell, file copying tool. So we'll leave it as is. Go back here, go next. Now we need a default username, and we're going to use a default password. root administrators account root password show passwords auto login which I never select that's if you want to go straight into your user and save live desktop changes we're going to install so I don't think we need to do that we're in the middle of installation we go next of course we're now creating the user and after this is done we're done and now we can reboot our system into our brand new spanking brand new antics installation running on real hardware so that's the video for showing you how easy it is to install Linux in particular some of these lighter lightweight Linux distributions such as such as antics in the next video we're going to show you uh, quickly an overview of antics itself on an installed system Stay tuned. Okay, here we are, ready to boot up into our new Antix installation. Installation is uh, the boot sequence has started. One thing that scares a lot of new people into Linux, uh, out out of Linux or of Linux, is the startup as we see here. It's very cryptic, very fast. Scrolls by. A lot of things are happening. But uh, rest assured, all that is happening in Windows or Mac OS as well. Linux just bears its, its uh, undergarments, if, it, if I can call it that. So let's log in. Login is extremely fast. Here we are in our brand new Antics installation. Uh, notice that uh, this is this the information panel has been moved over to its proper side now on the right side. It was actually over here and running quite strangely uh, in a poor position uh, when it was running as live. 
everything seems to be almost the same. Uh, the default file manager is Rocks Filer, which is uh, quite common in some of these lighter weight distros. Uh, on the right, we have the time, of course, and we have volume. Clicking on the time really doesn't do anything. Here we have log out, refresh. This is interesting. That appears only when you're down on the taskbar view selection, but when you're on the desktop itself, we have another program launcher. So let's take a look at what's in there. Let's go to menu. This is an interesting menu, personal. Personal menu help video. Available resolution, I'll choose best. Let's take a look at this. Interesting, this is a video on how to Use the personal menu in Lantix. Very nice. And how to manipulate and use correctly and effectively the menu manager. That's a nice addition. I like that. Okay, we have the terminal, of course. Rocks term. Let's dig a little deeper. We have our web browser. which is Mozilla Firefox web browser. Nice, a fully featured web browser. One of the things about that I have been um, adamant about is when people move over to Linux from the Windows world, it's easy for them to become a little bit more acclimatized quickly when they're using applications that are available uh, on the Windows platform. For example, with the browser, you'll have Google Chrome or you'll have Firefox as an example and they feel right at home. Okay, so we have an editor. Okay. Hmm. Genie, not familiar with, but it it's, uh, looks pretty good. And we have the person we went there. Applications, accessories, archive manager, cherry tree, color. Clip it, clipboard manager, leaf pad, search monkey, XFBurn, LibreOffice Math for education, games is uh, DOSBox emulator, DOS emulator, June, Majong, graphics, we have Gcolor, GTCam, LibreOffice Draw, screenshot, simple scan, internet, Firefox ESR, which seems to be very popular in uh, distributions these days. Dilo, we have uh, disconnect shares, Droopy connect shares to connect to different shares. We have clause email. Nice. Uh, GFTP, XX chat transmission. Okay, network manager. Office, we have the full Libre Office. Excellent. Excellent. Let's continue. Programming, Genie, Vim, sound and video. We have. XMMS, we have a lot of uh, audio and video players in here. Very nice. System tools. Gparted is included. HTOP, uh, US, live kernel USB updater. Live USB kernel update. Live USB maker to make a UB USB uh, bootable uh, media for your running system. I like that. Meta package installer. Midnight commander. Synaptic package manager. Very nice. So as you can see, lightweight doesn't mean not capable. Everything that you could think of, or not think of, I stand corrected, everything that is necessary for someone to become productive immediately, and I say that in all my videos, if you can install this thing and be productive immediately, I find that's a big plus. And it doesn't mean that you have to have the kitchen sink in there just means you have to have a good selection of quality software and it seems that uh, we have that here I don't see an automatic updater but I don't think that would be a big problem let's look at this meta package installer okay this installs meta packages which is packages for example, if I select a meta package audio, I will get all of this installed in one shot, but it allows me the fine grain selection to select what I want. Uh, this is very good for someone who's just doesn't want much fuss or must. They want to go in there, 
Oh, I see that we have disk tools. Okay, I want them all. Okay, uh, FTP tools. There you go. Graphics should show some interesting stuff. Blender, GIMP Basic, GIMP Full. Uh, if you click just on graphics, you'll get everything. So I think that's pretty cool. It makes it very, very easy for to, to uninstall and get stuff put on our system and really tailor it the way you want. So I like that. I like that a lot. We have different themes. Looks like we have a lot. Different themes we can select. Focus. Um, control Center. Let's look at this now. Pretty much every Linux distribution these days has a control center of some type. Basically a place where you can select you can change certain things about the underlying running of your system, install printers, uh, configure a network, and so on and so on. Here we have the desktop things you can do. We have system, manage packages, configure system, manage users, system information, choose your startup services, set time and date, network. We have network interfaces, configure GPRS wireless configuration, WPA supplicant, if people are still using that, configure dial-up, I don't use dial-up, but um, in certain countries where high-end hardware may be uh, overly priced for people, the average person to get, or is just not available, uh, dial-up is still being used and it's good to have it there, in particular, that, in particular since this Linux distribution is geared towards um, lower-end hardware. We have Adblock, nice for an inclusion. Change your keyboard layout, set screen resolution, set auto login, set screen blanking, user desktop session. Very nice. Little tools will pop up. We have disks, configure auto mounting. Okay. Install to USB and delete partitions. Very interesting. Image a partition. Very nice. Partition image is included. Okay, synchronize directories, back up your system, install to USB retain partitions, uh, partition a drive, we have hardware, configure mouse, set up sound card, also mixer, set up a printer of the typical box that I see so many times come up for that in different um, Linux distributions. Okay, let's look at how lightweight this really is. Um, I've never seen it go over this. It's not gone over 200 megs of RAM used. Uh, the swap is zero. I can see that I'm using 2.41 gig of uh, 6.74 gigs available. It's an eight uh, eight gig uh, eight gig uh, bit partition that I put it on. Uh, and of course, um, with uh, formatting and whatnot, you lose some space, but it's quite lean. Battery's full 100%. There's my resolution. Interesting. So what we're seeing here is something that definitely is very frugal on the memory. Let's try that out. Let's go to web browser. Of course, Mozilla Firefox. And now we're up to 291 megs of RAM. 298 if we go to a few sites. Of course, we're going to see that climb, but it's still quite low. Uh, I would say that if you have even one gig of RAM with light, uh, light computing, this will work really well. If you have two or four gigs of RAM, now you're looking at the sweet spot. I think the sweet spot for this system will probably be two gigs of RAM for the average person, in particular considering the hardware that this may go on. So at the end of this, what can we say about antics? It gets two thumbs up from us. That's what we can say. It is definitely a light running system, very light on system resources, extremely fast. Uh, you're not going to get some of the bells and whistles that you get in other distributions. Um, but that's not what it's there for. It's, it's, it's there to bring to life older PCs. And I can see uh, myself being very happy installing this on one or two older machines. Um, what I have done, actually, is I've installed Linux on a lot of older laptops, for example, five, six years 
old and I have to be honest with you none of my clients have come back and said that they wanted to change they do ask a few questions and then they're pretty much on their own would I tell them antics maybe maybe not I would probably go for MX Linux for those kind of people in particular if you saw the last video for the MX Linux installation um, sorry that wasn't the installation it was the review and overview I would probably select MX Linux over antics only because it does have an auto updater and uh, keeping things fresh and um, it's a little bit more fancy looking in a way let's just call it like that than antics but for someone who's got moderate computer skills and just wants to bring alive a new an older system maybe for just surfing and getting out there antics to me sounds pretty good And of course, this for the final thing, we're going to check, check Flash functionality, and Flash works beautifully. Very good. So, two thumbs up for Antics. Definitely something you should keep a look at and uh, take a look at. Running on the We Install from Debian Stable. One big plus is you get to choose whether it's Debian Stable testing or uh, the other repository prior to even installation. And that's something that's we consider that to be a massive plus. So uh, if you liked the video, give us two thumbs up or just give that one thumb up. Uh, leave some comments and uh, we look forward to bringing more videos to you, not just of Linux distributions, but of hardware as well. Take care and thanks for watching.